Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. This is a period where we're going to be outgrowing so many parts of our lives. It's hard to even know and predict what areas of our lives we're really outgrowing until we are way past it and we're like, oh... I don't, I, I, was, I don't need to be in that relationship anymore. I don't need to be in that house anymore, or I don't need to be in that job anymore. There are many, many ways in which we have outgrown ourselves and will continue to outgrow ourselves over the next several years. And that's the blank slate work that we were discussing, how we were in the process of blank slating our lives. I actually feel like I want to get like a, like a dynamite <laughs> and put it in the middle of my house and press yes and watch the whole thing just crumble. Yeah. That's how I feel and take everything yeah. with it. Well, that's what happens when you've become the person you've always been meant to be. And again, so let's just go back for a second. I mean, that's what the past few years have been about. And we've been setting up for this. Like we have been set up for this blank slating process since 2016. It's not to say we didn't already see it coming, but the blank slating of our lives all really began in 2016, when all that shit really became in our faces and unraveling. So a lot of things that we believed about ourselves, right down to the things we thought we wanted, that we didn't think we'd ever be able to live without, exist without, couldn't even imagine a future without, suddenly it was like, wait, even that, which seems so foundational or fundamental... I can actually live without, that's pretty impressive. Now, it's not to say that people will live without them, but what we are blank slating our lives was intended to help us accomplish was to be able to detach from all these things. So that way, when they enter our lives, if they're meant to, because it's part of our purpose, they'll do so from a different level, a different vibration, and that's very much more purpose-oriented as opposed to you're going to, this is all going to sort of feed my ego, my karmic fears, et cetera. Not that it has anything to do with the story. But no, I know. <laughs> I was just thinking, I don't even know if that goes in, but it was just, it's just. It so does surprising. go in. It should go in, Ram. Yeah. Because that is really, a, I mean, that's probably one of the few ways in which we can explain what the past couple of years have been. That disconnection and that disillusionment that the past couple of years created was really intended to allow people to be able to blank slate themselves in their lives. So for you, where you thought partnership was the end-all be-all, mm. the fact that you've been able to detach from that I mean, means I really that you've just... now been set up for you know a proper, mature adult life, which will naturally include partnership, but in a way that in which you could never have imagined. And that's what's really important is that a lot of these things will enter our lives and matter to us and be important to us, but for reasons we could not have fathomed when we were in our karma and mm. living in our ego shit. I used to always say to you, like, for me, the goal in my life was to know that I was good enough to want what I wanted, almost, mm -hmm. to, to make choices and for them to work out. Right. That was it. And it was the for them to work out bit, which was the bit I really struggled with, because when you're in your karma, things don't work. Mm -hmm. They kind of are showing you where you're powerless because you're waiting for your choices to save you. Well, you're just waiting for everything to save you. everything and everyone to save you. Right. And then if not, you can blame everything and everyone for them for it going to shit, yeah. including yourself. But yeah. I do feel different. I know I am different. Mm hmm. And I can't really explain that. And that's what's weird. Like, I feel I need to be able to explain it in a better way than just, I'm good. Yeah. But you can't. Because when it comes to spirit and the work that results from spirit, you really cannot put it into words. It's too experiential. These are. This is not something that we can just put sort of trivial human words to. We can't speak to spirit in that respect. We can only express it in our being. Just because someone was a bit delayed or held up in 2020, and even in 2021, just consider that there's always going to be a catch-up period. And that's just a great growth opportunity, so take it when you get it. And you'll recognize that there's a catch-up period because it could be, and this is going to sound strange, it could be that you end up going on holiday 
And that allows you to process all these things that you can't in your everyday life. It could also just be life just going quiet. Mm -hmm. It could be even your karma just in your face so hard to burn something out, right? Because Mm -hmm. as a lot of people, the delay sort of not only quieted life, but in a way where we didn't get the kind of interaction Mm -hmm. or stimulation we were needing to like face our karma. So there's going to be various opportunities throughout this year to catch up because we're not meant to be behind. The higher self is really going to be pulling whatever strings it needs to, to get us back where we need. But motherfuck, we did five, technically six seasons in how many years? It's a lot of work. Your growth and development and your spiritual evolution was tied to this work. Yeah. And it was a really big deal for you to be able to open up and share yourself. And that's really why, or that's how we conceived of this podcast. I mean, it was for you to get some answers to some of your personal issues and being able to, you know, get firsthand tips, right, from the universe. Mm. And it stemmed from our conversations that we would have at the gym after our dance class. It just seemed like, well, why not? And I loved how open you were about that and how open, I mean, I appreciate personally just how open you have been about your personal struggles as you've been going through this process. And it allowed me to find, you know, to also, I had been considering how I was going to be able to sort of share the work and my insights over the past many years, because I do feel like there is room out there in the spiritual realm for a more practical spiritual approach. Most people who have even a dot of an open mind, and even without one, because I oscillated, right, a lot between having a very open mind and between my mind being very, very closed, Mm -hmm. would love the opportunity to just fire questions at the universe. And that's effectively what I was given, right? Yeah. And yes, I made it about me. Because that's just who I am. And yes. Um, <laughs> well, that's also where you were at in your life. Yeah. And I wanted solutions and answers and I wanted to fix it all. Mm-hmm. But the way my mind works and the way your communication works, it ended up being that we we learned way more than I think either of us ever bargained for. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like whether it was about <laughs> dating and relationships to karma to fate, you know, as well as like insights about like the inner workings of the universe like Mm -hmm. and I don't stop asking questions and I'll never forget even in our first session that one you know the heroin high session that we joke about (laughs) like the the second half of the session which spookily got erased from the recording was just me asking about the workings of the universe it had nothing to do with me Mm -hmm. and I remember me going I was saying to you oh is this really annoying and you're like no I'm i it's amazing you're asking these questions. We get to hear the answers. And I feel like that's kind of what the podcast has been about. Like on one side, it's just been me dealing with my disempowerment. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, it's been this beautiful opportunity for me to ask the source effectively. (laughs) Yeah. You know, what the fuck's going on? You know, and I learned way more than I ever thought I would. And that was so gratifying and so humbling and so exciting because unless I would just sit down, I don't necessarily enjoy sitting down and asking these questions by myself. No, I don't no one necessarily does. want to sit in my and ask questions in my head all the time. It's just not interesting and it can literally make you a little crazy. And so and I was just, knowing your memory, you just forget. So. <laughs> I have the memory of a goldfish. It's so sad. Yeah. I used to have such a great memory. But now it's just so full of all this stuff. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But the reality is that unless you're really sharing the work and you've just been such a wonderful partner that way, mm-hmm. so open and just so and able to process this along with me, because it does really take a particular person to be able to do to do that, to be able to ground the energy in this earth plane, to be able to receive it openly. And that by that, I mean an open heart. And to be able to still hold themselves up in their own right, in their own lives without losing their own identity. That's a very, very big deal. And it's not something that just anyone can do. A lot of people, you know, would like, you know, they say, I really wish I could have that gift. I really wish I could do that. And I'm like, but you don't. It really, there's a reason why this can drive people mad. And so it's been such a gift because I know that there's a lot of information and certain things I would have not been able to access had it just been me. Interesting. Yeah. And the fact that you would ask such pointed questions and get us to really explore to sometimes 
stupidest, most minute detail, thank you, (laughs) certain topics, but it gave us so many ideas that we could finally take to people in a way in which it would become palatable and not so airy fairy. And I think that is a true gift to be able to do that because there is certainly, I believe, an interest and a need for this world to have a much more grounded view of spirituality as just what helps facilitate a connection to the divine. That's all spirituality is. It's all about our relationship to spirit, not everyone else's relationship to spirit. And I think that a lot of that's gotten wrapped up in conflated with new age spirituality, which I think just doesn't serve most people anymore. Well, because it's a reflection in many ways of 3D separation. Mm -hmm. Anything that tells you that there's a right or a wrong. Yeah. It's a kind of signpost for it's not in oneness. Therefore, it's not of the new actual age. Precisely. And I think that what was there was room for new age spirituality and separation because we needed evidence of the divine and spirit at a time and in a place where those signs really weren't always there or easy to mm-hmm. see. But we don't need a lot of that crystal licking, saging stuff anymore. We can still go about our lives and just be us in our most divine form. And then we can pick and choose what's going to keep us connected or not. But it's always us, right? As a society, we've always focused on what we can see and what other people can see with us. So it's almost like corroborated Mm -hmm. knowing. Yeah. And what's interesting is the stuff that's really not corroborated in many ways. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm awake and I know when I'm asleep. I can't explain it, but I know it. Hmm. I know how I feel about something, about someone, about... I know what excites me. I know when things sometimes are going to happen. I know things I shouldn't, maybe can't even explain that I know. Mm -hmm. But growing up in a society where that is deemed crazy and where the logical is deemed sane and rational when actually that's what hurts us, I actually believe like a lot of the shift that will come will simply be one where what we prioritize as fact shifts Mm -hmm. from external to internal first Hmm. and I think that is such a gift for all of us going forward because it validates our perceptions our worlds even if we are the only ones doing so and that's enough sometimes we can't even believe what we see but if we go inside to what we know that our truth doesn't oscillate I can't really explain that any better. No, I think you're right, because I do feel like in separation, because the emphasis, you know, with the polarity that emphasized right and wrong, good and bad, we were always relying on others to tell us what was good and bad. Mm. And so our truth always fell in line with that. So that's how we would know. As you said, it was almost like this corroborated knowing. Mm. Well, I know what to do because everyone else is doing that too. Yeah. And I know how to live because that's how, that's that's what everyone else is telling me how I should live yeah. and that's what's the right thing. Mm. And we're moving into an age in which it's, no, it's completely up to me because it's the empowered age. And so what, to me, what you were describing in terms of your experience was your move into empowerment, that when you know your truth, that's how you know you are empowered. I don't think most people listening realize, but... Each episode you've channeled, right? And you get maybe one or two at a time or sometimes a season, but you don't see how the dots connect until the dots have already connected. Yes. And so I guess at this point, when we're coming to the end of season five, which was technically the body of work that they kept telling us these this is the this is the learning it's to the end of season five as it were yeah which would now have I been five I... seasons not six <laughs> exactly but okay. which would have been five but not six but, but that's you fine know, <laughs> that, that is what it is mm-hmm. my question then is are they willing now to tell us what the point of this whole podcast has been about what have we been working towards in 124 episodes because yeah. originally it was supposed to be 99 episodes did you know that So in the very beginning, at some point when I began to grasp that there would be multiple seasons, which when we first started, we were like, let's just try episode one, Mm, (laughs) which which how many takes took us six (laughs) hours and how many takes? Oh my goodness. And I could not stop laughing. And I forgot about that. Do you remember? I just, I was, (laughs) my apologies. No, I'm way fine. better now. But we had a lot to learn. We, you and I are very similar in the in one respect, which is that we just tend to 
figure mm-hmm. things out as we go along. We wing it. It's trial by fire all the time. It's how I've always lived my life. So we just decided, okay, we're going to do it this way. And that's when it became clear a season would be 20 episodes. Didn't even know what those 20 episodes were. I would get, as you said, I would get one or two at a time. And then at some point, maybe mid-season, as we'd start to understand and sort of see where we were headed. Funny enough, I just had always seen there would be five seasons and it would be 99 episodes. They were very clear they were not going to get to 100. I don't know why. Guidance is always very funny and specific like that. But I think that there was just something about not ending on episode 100. So through the five seasons, we were developing, unbeknownst to us, an entire body of work that was meant to be of service to anyone who wanted to gain a different perspective on life, relationships, and their own work, and how to make it all that they would want it to be, as opposed to how they thought it was supposed to be. What ended up being the goal of this half-baked project was being able to empower people. And so that followed your own process into self-empowerment. I know this work works because it worked. I came to you in my first session lost lost from myself I had separated so far from myself I don't think I even knew who I was anymore and this process hasn't just been about facing where I've given away my power it was where I gave away myself and I really think that this work is for me proof that once you reclaim those pieces of yourself and bringing them back together can often be painful because you have to acknowledge why they split in the first place you literally are able to choose your own life. No one can dictate to you where your joy is. No one can dictate to you what your day even looks like, who to love, how to love, when to love, if to love. I lived my life through the eyes of others in every shape, way or form. And that meant my life was never mine. I was never free. I was Mm -hmm. never in power. And I was never happy because I let someone else dictate to me what my happiness should feel like. And I know that this work works because that's not the case anymore. I am happy regardless of what that's anyone awesome. else thinks of me. My work I, is complete. Nice. <laughs> I'm, not super ha- I'm not always super happy. I'm still <laughs> pissy and sad a lot. But like, I just feel like whatever happens, happens. I mm-hmm. don't need anything or anyone. Ultimately, we are here for a transition. Mm-hmm. We are here. We've spoken about mission. We've spoken about purpose. We've spoken about a fuck ton of stuff. It all joins together in one big dot, which is effectively we are here for oneness. And And we didn't necessarily get that full big picture early on, did we? We just Sometimes I think like if they told us, I wouldn't have understood it or I would have made it into something it wasn't. Well, that's always the point. And I think that that actually that's the larger point of for anyone who's, who really begins and embarks on this, you know, spiritual journey or healing process is that if you really have an end point, you may not necessarily enjoy or get as much out of the process as you would just taking it one step or like you one season at a time. Because the mind likes to play, it likes to play the what ifs, it likes to play the game of, okay, well, if that's my end point, I need to get there as fast as possible. I need the shortest steps so I can get to oneness, right? And these are the shortest steps, to be honest, because... (laughs) But we wouldn't have thought that (laughs) necessarily, right? they are, because Mm -hmm. what is it? And it's just how much you resist it. Yeah. Kill the karma, kill the fear, kill the ego. That's it pretty fucking simple it's not easy but it's pretty simple and it's funny because fear as itself we get so used to living in fear that even when the things we solve the things we're scared of we look for new things to be scared of fear exists regardless of what we're scared of oh yeah until we tackle the core fear ego will therefore always exist because Mm -hmm. it's there to protect us from it in some way and our karma is there to try and constantly be breaking us out of it what we don't understand is that karma is working against our fear and our ego it's not working with it Mm-hmm. and that is a difference that we, I think that's why we I, I just realized in this moment why we said karma's my bitch because mm-hmm. actually we're not it was not we've got to beat our karma it was never meant to beat our karma no. we were meant to see it as what it was which was a tool it was a tool to empower us and allow us to find our divinity and when I say divinity, I don't necessarily mean you have to believe that you are God. God even exists no. more than your choices 
create your life and they are based upon your perspectives. Therefore, until you are able to see that you are the one that is creating your life, mm -hmm. until you are able to take responsibility for that life, and until you are able to see why you've created the one you're living in, you can't create fucking anything else. It's just really that simple. So karma is actually working against our fears. When things go wrong and we take it so badly, when the shit that happens to us hurts and makes us want to wail and give up, they're literally just the points that are telling us, where are you giving away your power? Mm -hmm. Where are you not in wholeness within yourself? Because if you were, if you were making choices from a place of peace, the consequences would never matter Therefore, your karma wouldn't exist. And so effectively, this whole thing for me personally is not, oh, we're going to teach you how to get the guy. We're going to teach you how to get the job. We're going to teach you how to sort out your family dynamics. We're going to get you to a place where it doesn't matter what the fuck is going on around you because mm -hmm. you're still good. And that is a much bigger gift because what we're doing, and that's mm -hmm. why I believe in the work so much, is we're allowing it to become unconditional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when it is about getting the guy, getting the job, getting the dynamic, getting the accolades, getting the appreciation, whatever it is that you're the carrot, right? Mm -hmm. You're still therefore dependent on that carrot. What we want to give you and what I have experienced for myself and what I own and what I have now is that there is no carrot and that's the joy. <laughs> I am not dependent mm -hmm. on anyone. My life is me being happy, me being in peace, me enjoying every fucking thing that comes into my world is not dependent on whether that thing leaves again. And that and is freedom. I was going to say that is true freedom. But, but what that means is the byproduct is that all those things that I do want to experience, that I do want to go for, that I do want to have, I'm no longer scared of having them. If only because I'm no longer scared of losing them once I've had them. Mm -hmm. And one might ask ourselves, how often do we not go for something? Because we don't know what will happen if we get it and then we lose it. Going through our karma, looking at the shit that happens to us, coming to this powerful and free place doesn't just allow us to be okay no matter what. It allows us to be okay when everything we want falls into our lap. Or mm -hmm. as we would say, when we co-create with the universe and magic everything we want so that it flows into our lap. But we're not finished just because we got to, you know, five, but really six seasons. I mean, as we've said, in terms of purpose, purpose is always about being able to serve the collective. And mm -hmm. so everything that we end up doing to some degree that might be an extension of that purpose or mission has an expiration date. And that's mm -hmm. okay because it doesn't mean that everything's over and that you just go back to living your sad life. It's the, no, you end up sort of pivoting and transitioning to other things. And that's the beauty of it because we're not in an age where we're meant to be in the same job or doing the same thing for 20 plus years. That would be boring. And that's part of 3D separation. That's what kept us safe and mitigating our fears. But also Liz, we're not in, we're not in a world anymore where endings mean the same thing either. No, it's that's more true. a transformation. We're always going to be moving in this energy, this sort of like new 5D energy. It's always going to keep us on our toes, but not in a way in which we're constantly responding to stimuli and fear as much as it is just the swirling of energies and vibrations. And that's really exciting because every time we dance the dance at 5D, it means that something new is coming. I don't understand anything of what you just said. <laughs> I always still like that because then I'm like, okay, then we get more information because the karmic dance, Rhea, is that when you are in 5D, and you are in oneness, it means that you get to traverse this entire vibrational spectrum that was not available to you in 3D. So that vibrational spectrum keeps you in 5D and higher, where you higher. get to and higher. So that's what you get to dance in. And you get to traverse those harmonics. And that's kind of in the loosest sense, but not firmly defined as you, we had described before in the sort of everything's okay is your baseline, fine is your baseline, good is your baseline, sort of moving Happy. up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's what the dance is. It's just being able to traverse the different energies within the 5D spectrum. Which starts at good? It starts at fine, but it's a beautiful dance. Once you are fully engaged in your purpose, that you can you can take it anywhere. Okay. 
Yeah. And so for us, the transition now begins that we can really show people how this applies to everyday life. As we had already begun to, what the coming season will be, and that's going to be technically season seven, and will be called season seven, Spirit in Motion, will be about exploring spirit in everyday life and will not really cover karma anymore. Because karma's done. Yeah. You made karma your bitch. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.